Since we have done the decimal, so this is the last part of rational numbers, determining square roots of rational numbers. Definition first, you saw it already this morning. What's a perfect square number? Yep, and we're just going to go backwards. It's a number whose square root is a whole number. And what that means is no fractions, no decimals. A number whose square root is a whole number, no fractions, no decimals. A number whose square root is a whole number, which means no decimals, no fractions. Dallin, you okay? You have a weird look on your face. For visual peeps, the reason they're called square numbers is because they can actually form a square. And I love if no one's ever showed you this before, it's kind of like a light bulb for some people. So nine is a perfect square because I can make a three by three square. Eleven is not because what do I have left over? Two. So that's why they're called perfect squares because it means we can actually form a square with the pieces. You need to have memorized the first 12 perfect square numbers. One times one. Two times two. Three times three. Four times four. Five times five. Six times six. Seven times seven. Eight times eight. Nine times nine. Ten times ten. Eleven times eleven. And twelve times twelve. I want you to turn to someone sitting in front, behind, beside you, and you're going to give each other a perfect square number. So you might say one, then your partner says four, then you say nine, etc., etc. Ping pong back and forth. Awesome, focus back. What kind of learner needs to do that? Oratory. That's oratory. They need to hear and they need to speak. We're going to do three things today with our square roots. First, we're going to estimate square roots that are non-perfect. Second thing, we're going to do the exact same thing, except they're nasty fractions. And then we have the dreaded word problems. So we have now, after today, have done three kinds of word problems. We have done with word problems with decimals, word problems with fractions, word problems with square roots. So we've hit all of our kinds of rational numbers. Grab a piece of paper, put today's title on it. No. Yes. Here is the method. Step number one, you write down the two closest perfect squares. The smaller of the two becomes the whole number of the answer. Then to estimate the double, we're going to decide which of the two your answer is closest to. If it's closer to the smaller value, the decimal will be less than five. If it's closer to the larger value, the decimal will be greater than five. So what we're doing is estimating approximately how much a non-perfect square root is. We need to know approximately root 22. What is that? 
Is that 5.7? Is that 4.6? Is it 2.8? We want to know roughly what is it equal to. I'm going to do left brain first, then I'll do right brain. So what we need to do is think on that list of the 12 numbers that we just memorized, that we just say to our partner, and I want you to tell me what's the lower one and what's the higher one. Which of the perfect squares is lower than 22? Which of the perfect squares is higher than 22? What is the square root of 16? What is the square root of 25? The lower number becomes our whole number part of our answer, so we know it's four point something. Now we need to estimate the decimal. So we ask ourselves, is 22 closer to 16, or is 22 closer to 25? That tells you that this is going to be bigger than 5. How much bigger than 5? You need to estimate. Is it 0.5? Is it 0.6? 0.7? 0 0.8? 0 0.9? Then it would be exactly 0.5. 0.7 estimation, yeah. I would accept 0 0.6, 0 0.7, or 0 0.8. So this is what I call an ish. It's 4.7 ish. It's not exact, it's just an estimation. That's all three steps. So I just want to number the steps. This was step one, write down the closest two perfect squares. Step three is figuring out that four because it's the lower number. Uh, yes, because clearly two comes after one. Step three is figuring out what the decimal is. If it's closer to the lower one, it's under 0.5. If it's closer to the higher one, then it's bigger than 0.5. Brody, question? B, square root of 17. Ooh, I put seven, but it's 17. What's the perfect square that is smaller than 17? What's the square root that is higher than 17? What is the square root of 16? What's the square root of 25? So we know we're going to have four point something. Now we just need to decide is 17 closer to 16 or is 17 closer to 25? Close to 16. Really close to 16 or kind of close to 16? Give me an estimation, 4 point. I would accept 4.2. I might even accept 4.3. Do you see how I did the work very differently? Pick whichever way makes sense to your brain. There's no one way for you to show me this work. C, 37. Don't say it. I want you to write down the smaller perfect square. What number should you have written down? Awesome, square root of 36. Write down, don't say it, write down the higher square root. What number should you have written down? Write down what the square root of 36 and square root of 49 are. Square root of 36 is, square root of 49 is, so we know it's six point something. Is it closer to 36 or closer to 49? Really close to 36 or kind of close to 36? Six point? I would accept three point, or six point two. Show me your thumb, I'm getting this, I'm getting this, not getting this. Good, find a friend, do D and E together. What is the lower perfect square of 105? Which I already heard somebody say is 10. What is the higher one to 105? Which is? So what do I know the first part before the decimal has to be? Oh, oh, you can't see any of this. <laughs> there we go. So I know it's 10 point something something. How do I figure out the something something? What is it closer to? 10 point? I would accept 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Any other offers? Remember, this is an ish. This is just an estimation. It's not the exact value. It's an ish. 
Latif, I'm not liking all the talking because I have to keep stopping for you. E, route 45, what's the lower one? Six. Higher one. Nine. That makes this six point something something. Six point. I would take seven, I would take eight. Any other offers? Point nine would be a little high for me. I'd pick, take point seven five. I'd take point seven seven five. I would take point eight one. Questions? Why? Why do we need to know this? Well, you're going to find all kind of roots in real life where you're not going to have a calculator, and you just need a quick estimation. We'll see when we get to the word problems. Second example is going to be these scary fraction-looking things. There's a law in mathematics that says if you are taking the square root of a fraction, you get to take the square root of the pieces. So this is the same as saying square root of 1 divided by square root of 4. Dal and Brody, question. You do. Take a look at the poster right behind your head. Yeah. Uh, not roots, but if you're going to be a carpenter or anything in trades, roots come up all the time. Anything that deals with right angle is going to deal with roots. Calculating percentages. Income tax. What's the square root of one? one. What's the square root of four? Two. Done. That's what it's equal to, a half. Ah, oh, no, how easy is that? Square root of one quarter, a half. The square root of 36 forty ninths. 36 forty ninths. There's a law in math that says if you're taking the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the pieces. What's the square root of 36? What's the square root of 49? Done. The square root of 36 forty ninths is 6 sevenths. I know. Oh, but now we're getting to the decimal. So there's a hint there. And we did that the very first day of this unit. How do we convert a decimal to a fraction? How many spots become, become the zeros? How many spots become the zeros? So this is going to end up being, and I'm just keeping that root sign for now, 36 over. Oh, now it's exactly like the questions above. There's a law in math that says if you're taking the square root of a fraction, you can take a square root of the pieces. What's the square root of 36? What's the square root of 100? And what do you think the very, very last step will be? I'm lost where the pamplemousse is coming in here. Hmm. Questions so far? D, 0 0.09. Again, don't let the fractions or don't let the decimal square you. I'm just keeping that square root. This is going to become 9 over 100. There's a law in math, guess, get this, that says if you're taking the square root of a fraction, what can you do? Take the square root of the pieces. What's the square root of 9? What's the square root of 100? Can we reduce? Question done. Square root of 0.9. This becomes 9 over? If you're taking the square root of a fraction, you can take a square root of the pieces. So this is going to be square root of 9 over square root of 10. Square root of 9. 
Uh oh. What's the problem with 10? What do we call it? What do we call it? Non perfect square root. What do we do when it's a non perfect square root? No, we just leave it. We just don't touchy. Leave it alone. No touch. That's it. Question done. How are we feeling on the scary fraction type? Thank you for the one thumb. How's everyone else feeling? Ready for the word problem? I hate them too, but they exist. That's why we practice. I want you to highlight or circle the word explain. 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 Eric, what is in your hand? Put it on my table, please. Oh, Jen. Put it on my desk. You've lost your privileges. Highlight or circle the word explain. We've talked about this before. What does explain mean? There needs to be some math and some words. More importantly, the words you are explaining why this is incorrect. Turn and talk with your friend. Okay, let's figure out how to word this together. You probably want to cover two pieces. You want to cover what did your friend do wrong? What is the correct way to do it? What did your friend do wrong? What is the correct way? Who has discovered what this person did wrong? Well, that was a good choice because now the friend is helping them. They tried math, more specific. What did they do? Not timesing, they divided by two. Is that the way we do square roots? So they divided by two. They should have. Who is my tactile person back there? Hmm. They should have what now? We, we just practiced square roots of a decimal. Like we just did square roots of a decimal. Like we just did this in the last example. Is that what we did in the last example? Okay, they should have converted to a fraction and then not quite there's a step in there you're missing you're on the right track though okay so what did I say five times in the last example you, they should then split okay so let's show that what should they have written after the square root of 6.4 okay what's the fraction Perfect. That's it. That's how we did it. That's the answer. 
Uh, how can we reduce this? But we can't divide the root because root of 10 is not the same thing as root of 5. That's it. Done. Number four, read to read. At some point in your life, you're going to have to paint a wall. Okay, let's highlight what's important. 15 meters square. What about 50, excuse me, meters square? What about the area? What will cover? How much paint? A can. Of? So this question is giving you an area, and what they want to know is what's the side length. What operation is that? Well, what do you think we've been doing this whole class? <coughs> Grabbing my red pen. Anytime you're given an area and you want to find the side lengths with an N in it. Dowling, can you write this down, please? That's always going to be a square root. So part A is just asking what is the square root of 15? Is it a perfect square root? No. Then we got to ish it. How do we ish it? Okay, what's the square root that's lower? 14. Not a square root. Nine. What's the square root that's higher? So what is the first part of this answer going to have? A 3. Is it closer to 9 or closer to 16? 16, so 3.9. Are we happy with that? Just some units because it's a word problem? Meters. Meters. Why not meters squared? Because it's not an area, it's just a side length, which are always just your units. B, keywords. Side length of what? More important? Square, it's important, it's a square. So the question is asking for two things. This they're giving a side length and they want the area, and then we want to know how many cans. So if we had the area and we wanted the side length, we square rooted. What do you think we're going to do when we want to go backwards? Let's find the square. So when you're going side length to area, you're going to square the number. So this one is asking for 7 squared, which is one of the perfect squares that we're going to memorize. And 7 point, I like that. So that's a really high football score. Uh, now what? Do you know why they're called the San Francisco 49ers? Because they came to the U.S. in 1949 for the gold rush. Now what? How many cans? So we have 49 meters squared, forgot the units, meters squares. One can will do 15. What operation is going to figure out the number of cans? Division. Division. So we need to do 49 divided by 15. Let's reduce. Well, let's change to improper first. Uh, mixed first.
But the question asks how many cans, and unfortunately you can't buy four fifteenths of a can. How many cans do you need to buy? Four cans. Questions so far? Read to read number five. What would you like to highlight? That tells you a shape without telling you what do we assume the shape is. Has to be a square because the dimensions are the same. What do we really need to know? We need the side length of an area that is. 18 inches squared. We need to know is the side length less or more than 4. So if we have an area and we're going to a side length, the question is asking us to square root it. What's the perfect square that is lower? What's the perfect square that is higher? Four point something something. Four point two was an offer. Four point one units. Inches. Will the framework for a four by four picture? But can you have a frame that's bigger? Can you put a four by six picture in an eight by ten frame? Sure, can we put a bigger picture inside a smaller frame? No, yes. no. so can we put the 4x4 four four picture? Yes, the picture will fit. Yes. 